So welcome to the Tour de France in the individual time trial stage. There's only one time trial stage this year at the Tour. Now most time trial stages are quite a bit shorter than a regular day stage. This one only 22 kilometers long, but it is a beastly 22 kilometers. Within a time trial stage, it's just the rider against the clock. There's no other riders with them at that point in time. But before they attack the stage, they're gonna be over here on these trainers getting warmed up and also trying to stay cool at the same time. So in this video, I'm looking at all the trainer tech of the Tour de France 2023, as well as whatever cool time trial day tech I see out there that's got like some sort of chipset or something like that in it. Also just moments ago, three helicopters landed here right next to the thing. It's pretty crazy. I've never seen them land like this close to the stage before. Now with that, we're gonna check out three teams that are outside the perimeter. They just didn't make the cut today, I guess. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and dive into the perimeter. We'll have a police are there uh, and take a deeper look at all the rest. So you can see one of the riders here from Team RK already warming up while also trying to stay cool. You'll notice he is wearing uh, a cooling vest there. You'll see numerous different cooling vests over the course of the day. Uh, most of the riders are trying to keep their core body temperature cool before they start the race while they're also currently trying to warm up their legs. You can see he's on Elite Suito uh, Dash C. The Suito Dash T is simply the version that comes without the cassette and you have to install it yourself. Obviously a pro team is pretty capable of doing that. Uh, and you've got some fans up here. Uh, this team is sponsored by Elite, so it does make sense that they're on the Elite trainers. Now here is Team Alpecan. What's notable about Alpecan is this is the very first time we've seen a non-Elite, non-Tax, and non-Waku trainer at the Tour. You got the Zwift hub over there. They are sponsored by Zwift, so it does of course make sense, but it's actually the first time we've also seen a Zwift hub at the Tour at all. Any other basically non-Legacy branded trainer from like the big three or four. However, you will notice that they've got the Oahu Kicker headwind fans up front there. Uh, Zwift does not make any headwind fans right now, though Jet Black, which actually makes that trainer for Zwift, uh, did just come out with their own fan that looks a heck of a lot like the headwind fans. So maybe we'll see Zwift rebrand that as well. Also check out this in the team truck, actually the mechanics truck, a whole boatload of washing machines. Now, most of the teams do have washing machines on the team buses, uh, but it's the first time I've ever seen, or at least noticed anyways, uh, having a full set of them inside the mechanics vehicle. So, you know, in the case here, you can see with Alpeca, they've got, this is the mechanics vehicle right here, this one, and then they've got the team bus right there. And so if you look in the back here, you'll see all the techie goodness or all the bikey goodness inside of that. Uh, and then over here is where the riders are gonna be hanging out. Now, the way the start list work here for the time trial is that they are in reverse order of your position in the GC. So uh, the very fastest rider, like the person who's in first place right now, will go last on the day. And the person who's in last place would have gone first on the day. Okay, so we're into the team area here. Masks are required inside the zone with the fence. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I appreciate that Team Israel Premier Tech has a boatload of pizza and in particular, they have shed over the pizza. Just in case it does rain, it looks like it might sprinkle a little bit, but uh, they're prepared. And just a quick note, if you are finding this interesting or funny or something, uh, just go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there. It really does help with the video and the channel quite a bit. Team Lotto Destiny there running uh, the Tax Neo 2 Ts. They are a Garmin Tax sponsor team. And in fact, looks like Garmin Tax has like created those little barrier things for all of the teams. Uh, I see a couple more teams with the exact same format down below. It's the first time I've seen that. Uh, maybe it was there last year. I didn't see it in the time trial stage, but you'll notice he was warming up on his road bike um, Though it looks like they are gonna be taking their TT bikes out here uh, There is some talk about some teams splitting this the stage basically the time trial up between the road bike and the TT bike Based on the train generally speaking uh, if you're going up some of the steeper climbs It's better to be on a road bike versus the flatter portions are better on a TT bike But doing that swap you lose like 10 to 20 seconds in a best case scenario assuming nothing goes wrong so you're kind of playing with fire depending on what your savings is. Next, we got Team Trek Lidl up there. Uh, they've got an interesting setup on the trainer front, so I'm looking forward to talking about that. However, most notably, no one has taken the pineapple yet. You can see he's going for something that looks like some strawberries, but no one has yet taken the pineapple. I'm not, not sure. Does anyone ever take the pineapple? It's guys. Yeah. Why? Just to know, every stage I see it here, but I don't ever see anyone actually take it. Hey, but we change every day, huh? Okay. So then we, we keep in, in the gym and then... Ah, but no one's just like walked up and took no, it and... No, 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 this is mine. That's yours? Yeah. Okay, your pineapple. Because it's good for the, um, the shape. Ah, I see, okay. That makes sense. They explain to you that you need to eat a lot of pineapple to... to ah, eat. I am, now I'm on board Team Pineapple. Perfect, thank you. See here at Team Trek Little going through uh, the ice vest, just doing a swap between the two different ice vests there. Uh, obviously the first one wasn't, wasn't so icy anymore. Yeah, and, uh... 
Now they are Wahoo sponsored team and you can see that they've got the Wahoo tickers over there but they also have the Wahoo roller right here. Uh, now earlier they had a bike on there and generally speaking when teams use the roller the reason they're doing that is it makes it a little bit easier for them to go straight from the warm-up right out onto the road. Uh, so especially with the disc wheels they sometimes can be a little bit finicky to get going uh, but in this case you can see he has finished up his warm-up and he is headed straight on out. So the way this works is that generally speaking most of the teams the guys are warming up for about 30 minutes or so uh, and you can see he did that trainer he just finished up he swapped to a different uh, cooling vest and he's headed out down to the start line. Uh, so in this case one of his team vehicles there we go right there in fact um, will follow him on out and then from there they'll go down to the starting area. So what we'll do is we'll actually work our way down all the way to the starting line. There's a lot of things that are going to happen uh, for a rider between the moment they leave their team van here with their follow car up until they get to that starting line. But of course we're going to check out all the tech along the way. Jumping into now, team education first. So you can see they've got the Wahoo Kicker V6 there uh, and then they've just took it off the bike and the mechanic is simply going through right now to make sure that all of these shifts uh, are proper. You can see team Movistar here. The bike's already on the trainers, elite speedos uh, up on the chart there. You can see they've only got four riders left in the race now unfortunately. Others have had to abandon. Team Wadu Sedel here is only one warmer station left. Uh, they pulled up some of the other ones already and closed them up. And if you look at their team calendar over there, which you can't really see the schedule for the day, uh, they've got two riders left to go and they're spaced about an hour and a half apart. So uh, they just have been cleaning up as they go along so they can get done for the day and move on. And being a Garmin Tax team, they got the fancy fence as well. Okay, next we got Uno X. And they've got the Tax Neo 2Ts. And that's not a surprise they're a Garmin sponsored team. No fancy fence. But that also makes sense because they're technically not a UCI World Tour team, but sort of the next tier down from that. So maybe they didn't get the fancy fences, not being a World Tour team, not really sure. But what is notable is the Backmasher fans. Uh, those fans are like super popular for regular people like you and me. I've got one of them as well. Uh, they're an awesome fan, an awesome alternative to the higher end, you know, four times the price, Kicker Headwind or the Elite fan or things like that that are really fancy, really great fans. But in terms of just like, blow power those blow well you can just see that one of the riders from team you know x uh trying to get a new ice vest his existing ice has no ice left as he said uh so trying to get that swapped out it is a hot day i've seen the temperature gauges outside the various team uh, vans reading about 34 degrees celsius which whatever the heck that is i'll put that in fahrenheit up in the corner uh but it's it's warm i'm i'm sweating in all the places and you can see here team jaco also in the elite suite of tees uh, Sweeto Dash T's or Sweetos. Uh, you know, very popular trainer for the World Tour teams, despite having fancier trainers like the Elite Justo uh, for those Elite sponsored teams, mainly because it's a very light trainer. Uh, you know, it's one of the things that you hear the team mechanics talk about is that they just want something light. They're going to drag it around and pack it up and all that kind of stuff constantly. Uh, it's just easier when it's, when it's lighter. And here you can see again at Team Ajeduar, uh more Elite Sweeto Dash T's. Uh, you can see the ice packs over there. Let's see if we can get the other side. Check it out. Washing machines doing the washing machine thing. So you can see the ice packs all over them there uh, on the back of his neck, uh, in the pockets around that kind of ice vest of sorts that he got. Uh, again, just trying to stay cool. And the different different vendors, of course, of ice vests out there. That's just one of them. Uh, some of them look fancier. Some of them have a lot more coverage. Got to go with what you got. Now, first of all, I'm noting many of the guys are riding two bikes down there. There's a team mechanic bringing one bike down and the riders themselves. Uh, there's a spare bike that still has to be inspected. We'll get to the inspections a little bit later on as well. Okay, so at FDJ, they got two interesting things. One, like three interesting things. One, they have uh, the Elite Justo trainers. You can see them back there in the corner. Two, they have some beastly fans in front of the riders, almost as tall as the bikes itself. However, the third one is the most interesting. The rider is actually not warming up outside right now. He's warming up in the uh, mechanics truck up there that I presume is air conditioned and cooled and everything else. So watch this as they open the door. I'm actually surprised we don't see more teams doing that. They've got the space to do it. Certainly in uh, their team buses, easily to put a trainer on the ground there in the highway or in the mechanics vehicles. Uh, you know, maybe there's, again, you know, physiological reasons why you'd want to warm up in the heat, but uh, it is notable that he's out of the heat clearly and in an air conditioned space. To Team Yama Visma with the uh, fancy fences here. And their warm-up is behind the fences right there. So uh, I'm going to peek through and see what's going on in there. You can see the guys warming up underneath there. Not sure how much they're going to like that, but definitely get that warm-up there. Note the special edition Tax Neo 2T, the yellow edition right there. Uh, it's a special one done for the yellow jersey holding team. In this case, uh, Yumbo Visma has that. 
And now we can see from that schedule back there when uh, the yellow jersey holder will actually begin his warm up, which uh, he's not begun until 4.30. Uh, but again, cool to see kind of the timeline of the day for each of those riders, the optimal meal times and so on. Uh, now, here at Team UAE Emirates, they have the Elite uh, fan out there, the Aria fan, as well as the Elite Justo. So definitely going like full on Elite, but even with the Elite mats, uh, they are of course an Elite sponsor team. So it's pretty customary for the different stuffed animals that are given out each day to be put in the front of the team bus. Uh, so you can see those here with all of the yellow jersey lions as well as the sprint jerseys and uh, the banana and all sorts of other things are there. And of course the uh, all of the elite goodness, all of the boxes uh, right here. So some of the stuff might be a little bit fresh for today's stage. Of course that makes sense given that this is the first and only time trial stage of this year's tour. Bora Hansgrove, they're also rocking the van uh, laundry machine there. Note the easy with the door. So obviously it's a machine that's seen some love over the years. Team Bahrain Victorious here. Uh, looks like you can see the elite fans below that, uh, but they're they're below the tent here. So not sure if under there is anyone warming up right now, but if so, you can see it. it does not look like anyone's currently warming up. Uh, looking at the schedule, they've got a few more guys a little bit later on. You can see Egan Bernal there uh, getting warmed up while his teammates just popped his bike off the trainer, uh, heading on out here in just a second. Again, it's just this never-ending flow of riders uh, going out one after another and hopefully having enough uh, team vehicles. In the case of Team Inuas, uh, they have plenty of team vehicles uh, to go ahead and have a vehicle with each rider. Okay, so here's what happens next as they get closer to the start. Uh, you've got the rider coming in this way, uh, and then in a moment, his team vehicle will follow. And you'll see his team vehicle will come down here in just a second behind him. Over here, you can see the team vehicles are getting the nameplate of the rider put on. So in this case, uh, this is the Movistar rider getting it put on right now. Uh, and they basically get down into the chute here, and you can see all the different team vehicles lined up behind it. Uh, there's both team vehicles up there, as well as various like official vehicles and fan vehicles and things like that. Uh, fans can't drive themselves, but there's like VIP tours and things along those levels. So you can see each one of these different uh, nameplates are already ready to go. Uh, and they've got these clamps that just go ahead and, you know, see sucker suction mounts there. They like simply pop it on the front of the vehicle. So here comes the next movie star rider. They're already set in order. You can see there he goes down there into his chute. We'll get to him in just a second. Cleaning the car first. And then applying the uh, suction cup mount right there. And that's it. It's as simple as that here, folks. Okay, so next he's going to come into the UCI tech station, uh, and this is basically where the UCI officials are going to go ahead and check the bike to make sure it meets spec. They're checking a bunch of different measurements, including angles as well as uh, distances across the board here. They're also checking in the bike uh, to make sure it's a registered bike that's been previously validated. From the UCI checkpoint, it's straight into the feed zone. Realistically, though, none of the riders are grabbing anything here because they have all their own team sponsored nutrition options, and this would, wouldn't be one of the sponsored options. Uh, from there, though, these are the bikes that have been approved and validated, ready to go. You see a couple of trainers hanging out. There may be some riders that have a preference to have additional training uh, or trainer time right before they get going. Uh, but they can lounge around right here. And this is where there's the TV crews that you'll see typically starting here. And then from there, they're going to go up that starting ramp up there uh, while the team vehicles are over here. And then it's straight out onto the race. You can see a couple different variety of trainers here. You got the uh, elite rollers, you got a tax uh, old school trainer, you've got a elite juicio trainer, you've got a kicker over here. It's basically like the leftover grounds of trainers, uh, just in case someone needs them. Also, in case someone needs something for the potty, right to behind the riders uh, in case they need that. Uh, but from here, they're going to go up that ramp, and there's a countdown clock they can watch and follow there until their countdown of the start. And then once they go down the ramp and start, you'll see the team vehicle will zip in behind them uh, and follow them for the race. And then generally speaking, you've often got some uh, additional kind of VIP vehicles, like I mentioned earlier on. So you can see uh, there's a team Yumbo vehicle. In that case, uh, that's for their main rider. Uh, but here is a Skoda uh, race partner vehicle, and they're going to have VIPs in it. Now, as we get closer to the end of the uh, starting lineup here, we've got Team Yumbo Visma with, of course, the number one spot or the last spot they want to find it for today. Uh, and then Team UAE right next to them as well uh, with number two. Okay, current yellow jersey holder Jonas Vindegaard just stepping out of the team bus about uh, six minutes ahead of his scheduled time slot uh, on the team van there that you see. Uh, he's still got about a half an hour or so warm up time. Going into the tent here, I'm going to circle around the backside, check it out. He should be on that. Uh, yellow Tax Neo 2T, the special uh, yellow jersey holder edition. So you can see just pouring the water into those misting systems uh, to keep him cool. 
He is on that yellow special theme uh, Tatsunio 2T and chugging along. And it looks like according to she has about a half an hour workout uh, before he heads down to the start line. Meanwhile, behind me here, the mechanics truck, we've got Adam Yates warming up up there. Again, this is really the first year that we've seen teams do warm-ups in the mechanic truck. Or at least it was definitely not common in the past. I think it's one of those things, I'm sure like one team did it, and then every other team's like, damn, that makes way more sense to do that. Or you just do it the DMO Visa way and just blow a whole crap ton of uh, cold, misty air right out of it. Here he goes. Out to the vehicle. And then, his, and then his team vehicle will follow him right here, right along. That'll be his assigned uh, team crew mechanics. And I will take a guess that there are probably no like extra VIP people in that car today. It's all going to be team mechanics. Uh, no one extra at this level for this kind of rider. Uh, just so important to have the entire crew in case something goes wrong in the vehicle. Enterizo, se pone por ahora un chapote en un parquito para, para mantener, en este caso no es el calor, sino el frío. And there we go, off to the start line. He, his spare bike, and a whole team cars the spare bikes goes, hoping to maintain the yellow jersey there. And at this point, you know what happens after here. You've watched the stage by now, or not. Either way, I'm not going to spoil it for you. If you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there, or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. We got some good stuff coming. With that, have a good one. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos from the Tour de France so far this year, check them out up in the corner there. Uh, one that's pretty cool is I go through all the on-bike tech, so like the power meters and the bike computers and all that kind of stuff. And then for another one, I talk about why and where the power meter pedals are in the Tour this year. Uh, and rumor is there's actually a rider here on a Shimano power meter that's rotting pedals. I've not found them yet, uh, but if I do, I will let you know.